Most lathes will use a mechanical method for synchronization with a limited number of thread pitches available or inconvenient to change, like my south bend lathe that requires gears to be exchanged. In this setup, the spindle is monitored using a rotary optical encoder and the lead screw is advanced using the hybrid stepper motor. For every rotation of the rotary encoder, pulses are sent to and are captured by software running on this board, which in turn generates pulses necessary for the stepper motor driver to rotate the stepper motor to advance the lead screw to maintain synchronicity between the spindle and the lead screw. The ratio between the pulses per revolution at the spindle uh, encoder and the pulses necessary for the stepper motor driver to maintain that synchronicity as the electronic equivalent of the mechanical gearing. The Cloud42 uh, EOS is an assembly of a TI Launchpad Evaluation Board. That's this red board. And a seven segment display and a custom board for convenient wiring, power regulation, level conversion, and an EEPROM for saving settings. The changes I've made add support for a Nexian touchscreen display and input for a limit switch that can be used as a carriage mounted feed stop. I started by copying the appearance of the seven segment display to the Nexian display, including the push buttons. I also added a enable disable uh, option. And this is useful at least in a couple of places. One being if the stepper motor driver faults and the EOS is disabled and an alarm light is lit. The other is when advancing with the EOS toward a uh, limit switch. Uh, we'll advance up to a limit. The spindle keeps moving, but the, um, the EOS has stopped. We go steady RPM and start to change those. You can see how the shaft of the stepper motor changes accordingly. So you can disable the EOS from the screen and re-enable and it picks up right where it left off. This is the forward direction and the reverse direction. Metric uh, feed and metric pitch. Left hand and right hand. Everything was going well until the dry fault in and wouldn't turn back on. And the problem seems to be this fuse. I found what looked like a 10 on the original fuse. So I replaced it with a 10 amp blade fuse and it might not look quite as nice as the original fuse but it's going to let me get back to work. So it's turning on the power and looks like drive works fine. Uh, it might be a warning if buying a drive and motor combination just double check that you can buy a uh, buy the drive by itself. The touchscreen interface begs for a lot more development for example, touching the feed rate and entering in an arbitrary uh, value in a calculator-like uh, interface. Right now, we're limited to the feed rates and pitches that are contained within lookup tables, and there's no way to change those without changing the software. I have some suggestions for improving this custom board. If it's extended just a little, screw terminals placed on the board to make wiring encoders into it more convenient. To add the touchscreen, I needed a UART and 1GPIO for the switch. Uh, the EOS board covers one of the UARTs and, and of course has lots of GPIOs accessible. So headers could be um, added for people who wanted to use a touchscreen and a limit switch. FETs could be replaced with optocouplers and that would provide a level of protection between the sensitive electronics and the stepper motor driver. The EEPROM uh, could be replaced by using non-volatile memory already on the launchpad board, uh, the flash memory. I have two suggestions for the overall EOS code if the seven segment display eliminated. There's a lot of simplification of the user interface code that could be done. The second suggestion regards how steps are generated using bit banging in an interrupt service routine. This doesn't respect the need for the motor to accelerate. This is also probably better done in the control logic accelerator. And that would allow the main processor to do all the user interface work that may be slow while the uh, COA is dedicated to step generation. And that probably would lead to smoother step generation. 
I've never worked with a TI Launchpad board before, but I'm going to look at it more closely. TI has a lot of expansion boards supporting motion control and uh, sensing. It's also nice to support someone else's open source product. If you have a product and you'd like help with it, let me know and maybe there's something that we can work on together.